Sean, before we look ahead to the game, can we first of all get your thoughts on the appointment of Thomas Tuchel to the new England manager? Um, I think like most, you know, I've spent all my life watching English football being part of it. I think most would have liked a, an English coach, I think. Um, well, that's the general theme I get um, from people I've spoken to in the game and the general kind of viewpoint from the masses, it seems. But on the other hand, I think... The game's diversifying all the time. It's someone who's right for the job, and he clearly has got a record that suggests he can do the job, and that's for sure. So I think, you know, that's just the way it is. I think it, results will be important for obvious reasons, uh, but they always are if you manage your England. I'm sure of that. How do you feel yourself about an Englishman not getting the opportunity? Well, I, would, I can only imagine there's a, a big process to go through. Um, they mentioned approximately 10. I don't know how it's approximately. It's either 10 or not. I was quite intrigued by that. Um, anyway, um, out of the 10, I would imagine there has been some English-British coaches um, interviewed. I don't know for sure. Um, I certainly wasn't. Not that I asked to be. I'm just making it clear in case you want to ask. Um, but no, I, I think, I think um, they've, they'll have gone through a heavy process, I would imagine, to get to where they've got to. Here, how far have you gone to rediscovering the solidity and resilience that we saw a lot last season? Well, we've, we've shown signs of it, um, and I think more so the last game. You know, by no means were we as good in other games as we've been in other games, and, and there's still a lot of work to, done, uh, to be done from them performances the previous games. But, but we showed that resilience, as you suggest. We've got a good clean sheet. Um, came back to getting some, a, lot, a lot of the basics right, actually. Um, to keep a good side at bay and Newcastle and get a result. So it's showing signs. I mean, it's helpful when we get players uh, fit again. We're still missing a few, um, but a few are a lot closer than they were. With those players that would be missing, so where are we at with Branthwaite, Mikolenko, Coleman and Patterson, first of all? Well, sir, well first of all, Mikolenko's looking good, so that's a, a good step in the right direction. Seamus is back in the group and he's had uh, more or less the week. Jared's a bit behind them, um, but he's been on the grass with us, but a little bit behind them. Um, who's the one I'm missing? Uh, you mentioned Oh, Pato, yeah. Well, he's just on his uh, longer-term sort of plan to get him back, but he's looking fitter and sharper all the time. Um, not quite there yet, but he's training all the time, and so far he's, he's coming through it clean, which is really important, as in clear of injuries. And Chimetti and Brogier as well? Yeah, a bit, a bit longer term. Um, Yusuf has been incredibly unlucky, probably the most unlucky out of all of them with the oddest injury. Um, and he's making good progress now. He's on the grass with the, the sports scientists and so is Brozier. So he's, he's in front of uh, Youssef with his, his comeback, if uh, want of a better way of putting it. He will need a games programme, but he's certainly working actively now with the sports science group and hopefully he'll be crossing over with us soon. And obviously we saw Limon and Dai come off with seemingly an injury in the first game against Malawi. Then he came on as a substitute for Senegal in the second game. So how is he? Has he come through unscathed? Yeah, yeah. It's, it settled down really quickly. I think it was... One of them had to be cautious at first, but it settled down and, and he was clear minded. We spoke to him, he said, No, no, I'm, I'm clear to be involved in that second game. Um, and he's come back and he's trained today, so we're hopeful on that one. Finally, for me, Sean, you've obviously got two winless sides in your next three games now in, in Ipswich and, and then Southampton as well. We can build it up as a, an opportunity, your big opportunity to pull yourselves further away from trouble, but how do you see it? No, the, every game's an opportunity, but of course the league the league doesn't lie. It's there for a reason. Um, it can have its anomalies, but at the moment, you know, we feel we are an anomaly because we've been in the driving seat a couple of times and let them situations change. That's been down to us and me. Um, we're somewhat correct in that at the moment. We need to correct it further. But you can't take these teams for granted. Ipswich will be full of endeavour like teams do, especially when they've spent a, a, a small fortune, well, a recognised fortune in this level of football um, for a club who have just come up. So they're obviously intent on, on being in the division. Um, full of in between and then Southampton having a, a fair challenge. That's what happens. It's not easy to go into the Premier League. So I don't know what I say. You, you know, the one thing I've learned from my uh, approaching my 10th well, my year in the Premier League, you can't take anyone for granted. There's no gimmies. You know, I spoke to bigger managers done a lot more in the game than me managing bigger clubs than me in their times. And, and they said, you can't take for granted. You just can't. You know, you have to be right in every, every game. You have to get the details right. And we haven't got them right until the last three games where we've got more right than what we were getting early season. So if we can get the details right at both ends, perform properly and appropriately, then I believe we can win games. And uh, certainly out of these three, I'd like to think we're capable. Thanks, Finney. Hello, Sean. Sure. Um, what have you made of Ipswich start in the Premier League? Well, I think they did terrific, first of all, last season. Um, they've brought a lot of different players in, added to it financially, which is 
a choice that is not easy for clubs, you know, coming up. I know the guys there pretty well, um, and I think they're good operators. Um, they're learning as they go. You know, last time out was a, was a tough one. That can happen in the Premier League, you know, and it's hard to get a handle on it. And some game you think you have got a handle on it, it goes away from you. So it'll be a learning curve there. Every game will be a learning curve. But from what I've seen so far, full of endeavour, full of belief to take it on. And I think that's what we've got to be ready for. Just on Jared, is he available potentially for this game? or We'll, we'll have to make out? a decision on it because he's only really had a couple of days training with us. And, and, you know, last time he got through the game and then got a minor injury, but it still cost him a few weeks. So we've got to be careful with that one. So we'll have to make a, a call probably over the next 24 hours. Thank you. <laughs> but his injury is fine at the moment. Yeah. It's just his training schedule. That's the thing, by the way, just to be clear. Uh, just on to a close appointment. If you're an English coach coming through now, do you think it's disheartening that the FA have gone for a non-British coach? I don't think it's disheartening. I think it's just a reality of the modern game. You know, the, each, each pathway doesn't always lead to where you want it to. You know, you, you, you can only suggest down the history, or, or certainly my history with the FA, is in theory the idea was to get you know English coaches, fast-track certain members if needs be, get them through the system, create that platform for coaches going in into the, the system and therefore managing the country but it's changed so much football management and the view of it you know now they've obviously looked at it differently and, and at the end of the day we, we you know all of us want to win inevitably um, and I think that sometimes it sort of gets lost in modern football it's almost like yeah but how are you going to do this how are you going to do that what about winning so I, I don't think he'll be any under, un, under any illusion sorry as manager forgetting about nationalities he'll, he'll know that he's been put in there to, to try and win because Gareth did an amazing job, in my opinion, did a fantastic job. I mean, many different ways of his job with England, but we didn't win. So can we go on and take it to the next level? That would be his biggest challenge beyond all the rest of the noise, is trying to win something. How do you think he will get on? Oh, we'll see. It's, uh, plenty of very, very good managers have tried over the years since 66, and no one's quite done it, so we'll see. And um, you said you weren't involved in the process this time. Has there ever been a time when you have been involved in the process? No. Never been spoken no. to about the job, no. Is it, is, is it the dream, the job, the job for any British coach? I'm not sure dream's the right word for the England job. I think it's um, a respected job for the right reasons. There's someone who's been in the English game all my life, player, coach, manager, of course. But I don't think it's a dream. I think having spoke to a few England managers, I think it's necessarily a dream. I think it's a massively challenging job um, and changed over the years. Um, but yeah, it's certainly something I think in some point of your career you'd like to have a look at but it's certainly not my time now it you know for for lots of coaches by the way not just me um but yeah it's eventually it's something you'd look at you know eddie howe was one who's who's sort of noise rightly so but you know he may look at it differently with his with what's going on in newcastle some managers you know still learning as well you know a lot of a lot of international managers are, are older and wiser and been around a bit longer maybe maybe some of the coach were looked at and maybe they thought that um, I'm not putting words out of his mouth, by the way, but he was certainly one who I looked at and thought, well, yeah, he'd be someone who you could consider in that kind of uh, frame uh, to be England manager. But like I said, they've, they've got a, I'm sure they've had a, a depth of process to go through it and they've chosen someone they think can win. I won on Everton, if that's okay. Uh, <laughs> That'd be nice. <laughs> um, looks like a tough run in December for a few uh, the bigger teams. Is the next four or five fixtures. Are you looking at targeting those where you can pick up points? Uh, look, we, we've got to pick up points regardless of tough runs. We had different kind of toughness last season, points deductions and all the rest of it. So, you know, our focus has been clear on the, on the challenge right in front of us. We can't just keep looking at different areas of the league and all that sort of stuff. We've got to make sure that we're right in every game. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a belief of mine ever since I've been here. It was a belief of mine in my previous club, you know. You can only plan so much looking forward, and this season has been very, very difficult to plan anyway. You, you know you know the injuries we've had. It's been a constant process, constant churn of trying to get players fit. You know, people imagine you get them fit and you put them out there. They're not, they're not truly match fit. We've been trying to get a group of players all truly match fit, and we're just beginning to show signs of it, but we've still got players coming back from injury. So for us at the minute, it's just the next game is really, really important. Be right for that one. We look at who we've got available, hopefully no more injuries, hopefully getting people fitter again, and then we move on to the next one. Cheers. Thanks for moving. We'll go to Julia. Hey, Sean. Can I just check on James Garner? There's been some claims about his fitness, and also just given his performances recently at right-back, although he might not have been what you envisaged to have at right-back, is it his place to lose now? 
Well, Jimmy, Jimmy and um, Tim are the ones who missed out, actually. So Tim, unfortunately, has got a, a stress response of a bone in his foot. So he's going to be weeks, not days, unfortunately. Um, we, we're disappointed he's had a good start to season, good pre-season. Um, and we'll come back through it, but we're not sure on the timescales. Jim is similar. Jim has got a, a, a back situation. We're just monitoring at the moment. It's settling down, but we're not going to have anything too concrete until probably about the next week or so, when we'll know more, see how he responds to the, the treatment. So... Yeah, and he has been, he has come back to life, so to speak. You know, he's had an interrupted time in pre season at the beginning of the season, and I thought he's done very well since he's been back in you know, amongst it. Jordan Pickford was rested in the second England game. I just wondered, he hasn't had much of a break. He, he, you know, we had a fantastic summer for England. Have you seen any signs of fatigue with him? No, I mean, we gave him as much time extra as we could, um, you know, to get a break, mental mental break as well as physical. Um, and, and I don't think so. I think, you know, he's, he's had his fair share of question marks this season, but so have we, so have I. So have what we've been trying to achieve, it happens after a very strong summer. He's a top tra- top class goalie. Um, you know, the England thing will, will sort itself out, but he, he's a top class keeper and, he, and he's, you know, people can make all the, the sounds that they do about situations. That's fair. But when you see someone, you work with them all the time, what he's done here and what he'll continue to do, then we just concentrate on that this time. I appreciate it is a bit of a balancing act with, with injuries, you know, some coming in, some coming out of the squad. But all the signings were relatively young signings. So I just wondered, how do you balance that with, you know, their want to play? Fans want to see those new signings play, but they've got a lack of experience with some of the more senior members of your squad how do you balance that well that's exactly what we've been trying to do you know bring them into the side at the correct time bringing them in when they're ready bringing them in to dip them in dip them out give them that feel of premier league football some it works some are, some are ready hand in glove that's the way it goes some take a longer period you know jake's been very patient he's going to have to be because he's got three very very good center halves very experienced center halves there but he's one that he knows he's learning all the time i think he's been training very well um, Illy's kind of come to life now that we've, we've pushed him wider and he's come involved more. Tim had a really good pre-season, a really good start to it, but if the truth be known, he was probably the one we were thinking who was probably going to be more of a slow burner. So that's sometimes the way it changes. And Jesper, of course, you know, been in and out so far. You know, had periods when he looks like we know what he can be and then other periods when he's found it tough. And that, there lies the, the four stories of the Premier League. That's how it can be. So our job to filter it, monitor it, monitor it daily, get feedback, see how they're feeling, see what they're learning view their performances and try and get it right and try and get the timing right as well to when, when to put them in. Yeah, I mean, things you just put them in. If, if they're not ready, you can really hurt players. You know, if they're not ready for the Premier League, you can really affect what they're going to do in the Premier League. So we're trying to build them in and get them there when they're ready and therefore they keep going and keep improving. So with that then, you mentioned Jake there. How close is he to, to starting for you, particularly when you've got Branthwaite as a... As a you know, a yeah. maybe right now. How close, or what does he have to do? Is it more? Well, Jared's Jared situation was similar, but different, wasn't it? He'd, he'd been away on loan, he'd done well, slightly different. I know he's been at a, at a club, not on loan, and then came back in and took took the beginning part, injured in pre season, come through it, and has done very well. He's probably at that stage, you know, he's looking at them guys, and they're very good players and very experienced players in the Premier League. I spoke to him about it, he's here for the longer view. So I think it's four year contract. So but he'll be learning, he'll be looking at it and seeing it. He's had a couple of games as well. So his time will come. So, so is that more then rather than the physical side of it? It's more the mental side, the psychological side? No, it's side. Everything. everything. It's everything. The Premier League's quicker, it's stronger, it's, it's you know, the, the mileage, all the rest of it. It all goes into the melting pot. It's the mental side, it's dealing with all the games, the, the grandeur of all the games, Everton Football Club, what it is, all them things. They're all to be part of what their, their learning curve is, not just on the pitch, everything that's involved in it. Thank you, Thanks, Julia. Carl? Hi Sean, apologies, it's another general coaching question, but you're one of a small group of English Premier League managers, I'm just wondering if you can assess the state of coaching for English coaches, the, the level they're at, not necessarily in terms of what it takes to be the England job, but just in terms of where where the, where the game is at in terms of coaching. Yeah, I can't really assess it, because I don't know all the levels and who's working where, but um, an overview would be all everything that you learn on a course and all that sort of stuff is one thing. When you're actually out there doing it, that's a completely different thing. 
And the chance in the Premier League, we know there's only 20 Premier League clubs, let's, let's imagine we're suggesting that's one of the top levels of football, which it is, I believe, and around the world, actually. Um, then your chances are going to be limited just by the numbers game. And then if you put in the numbers game the amount of foreign ownership of clubs and the like, well, they might look at foreign managers rather than English homegrown managers. That's just part of the business. At the end of the day, people want to win. They want someone who can do the job and help the team win and help the club be successful. That's what it actually boils down to for me. But in terms of, obviously, there's a lot of talk about English coaches. I mean, there's a lot of talk about English players in the Premier League and the, how many numbers there were there. But... In terms of the opportunities that English coaches get, obviously you say it's limited at Premier League level, but... but no, it's limited by the sheer... You've yes. got 20 jobs yeah. and not many English owners. So foreign owners may, may well, just because they're cultural back, go for a foreign manager because they're used to that. It's not necessarily because they don't understand British coaches are good, bad or indifferent or English coaches. It's maybe just because they, they're used to dealing with foreign managers and that's what they want. Their model, some create a model that is more that way inclined. I think... Modern, modern management is changing all the time and I think it's going towards more of a head coach model which I think we're all, we're all aware of now. You know, and I, I mentioned recently about this club, it's slightly different. doesn't mean I'm managing everything but it's a management style role because of me sitting there and answering to everything. You know, it's more of a management situation um, whereas a, a lot of models now are more in the coaching situation. So they're choosing coaches that they think can be successful and some of the coaches are already used to that model. English, British coaches still at clubs where they're getting used to that model, I think, because it wasn't like that not so very long ago.